All right, so it's been a while since my last video on the Wild Beyond the Witchlight and I have no excuses except that there has been very little time and a lot of different videos to do. But now I'm back taking a look at the Wild Beyond the Witchlight and in this video I actually want to hold off on going to Hither just yet or into the encounters in Hither and I want to instead talk about how we can take the very linear structure in the Wild Beyond the Witchlight and open it up to give the players and the player characters a better feeling of agency, a sense of self-determination instead of this quite railroady structure that the adventure actually has. Now the reason we want to do this is obviously to give the characters and the players some uh, ways they can make choices on their own so it feels more like their adventure and they can take ownership of it and of course also because it's actually not that difficult to do in the Wild Beyond the Witchlight. So I'll first start off by just summarizing the general structure of the Wild Beyond the Witchlight and that is that the characters will start out in the Witchlight Carnival, they'll then go to Hither around level 2, they'll then go to Tither and they'll be level 4 as they went here into Tither. They'll then go to Yon at level 6 and then they'll be at the Palace of Heart's Desire at level 7. So that's a quite linear path through this venture as you can see where the characters are supposed to be at specified places at specified levels and they go from Hither, Tither, Yon and then to the palace. So we go from a structure that looks like this to a structure that looks more like this and while that may look complex and a bit confusing the point is really that we have six different paths the characters can take through the adventure but whichever way they go about it they'll go from having three options to two options to one option instead of having only one option at every step of the way. Now the way that we open the structure up is simply to give the characters the option of which of the three realms they want to visit as they're heading from the Witchlight Carnival. So instead of having one mirror that leads only to Hither, you have three mirrors that lead to Hither, Thither and Yon respectively and the characters can make their own choice of which of the three realms they want to start with. As they venture into one of the realms, they will then fight a guide and that guide can't help them get to the Palace of Heart Desire but it can show them the way to either of the two remaining realms. So let's say the characters started in Thither, the guide could show them to either Hither or Yon where they may be able to find a guide and a means of transportation to get to the Palace of Heart Desire. As they get to the second realm, let's for example say, say that that's Yon, they will then find a guide here who can tell them well, I can't show the way to Palace of Heart Desire, but in the remaining realm, and that would be Hither in this example, there is a guide and a means of transportation that may be able to get you there. So yeah, that's how you can open up, but of course it's never really that simple. You will of course need to make some adjustments, not only to how you present the adventure, but also the difficulty of the challenges within. If the characters get to Yon and it's not the third realm, you will of course have to take away the cranes that can fly them directly to the Palace of Heart's Desire. Amidor can't lead them to that realm, he can instead lead them to either Tither or Hither. And let's say the characters end up in Hither as the last realm, they can use a swamp gas balloon to take them to the Palace of Heart's Desire and if they end up in Tither as the last realm, it may be that they need to take the Pegasus and, f and use that to fly them to the Palace of Heart's Desire or that they can use one of the fae beacons to transport them directly to the palace. You can make these sort of adjustments to how the characters actually get to the Palace of Heart's Desire or why they can't get to the Palace of Heart's Desire from where they're from. Most of these changes will be pretty intuitive. One important thing you should note here is that it's a very good idea to ensure that the characters and the players let you know which realm they want to visit at the end of a session so you don't have to prepare all of the realms at once but instead end the Witchlight Carnival session just as the characters are picking a mirror to go through so you can prepare for let's say Thither before the next session and don't have to prepare all three because you don't know which mirror they'll choose to go through. And this is of course also true for the first realm and the second realm you want to know where the characters are going a bit ahead of time so you can prepare uh, and that's of course the disadvantage of having an open adventure instead of a linear adventure where you always know which next step you want to prepare. Simply opening up the structure isn't of course enough. What you will also want to do is ensure that the characters have information they need to make these choices about where to go. They should know more than just the names of the realms they're going to. They should know what is to be expected in each realm or why, a reason why they would want to go there. Leading the characters to the carousel in the Witchlight Carnival is the best way to do this because the carousel horses there have of course a lot of information they can provide to the characters, especially if they have the lost things hook. Having one or more of the characters have their lost thing be, let's say, in Hither and the other character has it in Thither, 
but Yon may be the best bet for how to get to the Palace of Hearts Desire. Something like that will give them some information. They may need to make a choice about which realm would we want to visit first. If the characters don't go to the carousel, you can of course just have Mr. Witch and Mr. Light provide this information. It could be Elevig Tumblestrom. You can also have the various NPCs in which like Carnival sort of tease various locations more so than they're doing an the adventure. Perhaps the Displacer Beast knows where the cop star has gone off to or they see the Halfling Rubin being taken to the mirror that they later discover can lead them to Tither. Uh, this sort of information will help the characters decide hmm, okay we, we know that Gleam is missing or Glista is missing so maybe we should look for her in Yon because that's probably where she went off to and and if we want to find Hurley's brother Burley we should probably look in Yon because that's where he, the person that took him away was last seen. Stuff like that. Alright but simply providing choices and giving information isn't of course enough you also need to make some adjustments to the difficulty. Now there's two factors here that actually help us uh, do this adjustment of difficulty with a more open structure. The first factor is that the adventure is written so characters can mostly avoid combat challenges, at least if they choose to. And the second is that the adventure is already pretty poorly balanced so it's not like we are giving ourselves a lot of work we wouldn't already have to do. It's my experience that you will already need to adjust quite a few of the challenges. An example of this could be Bafflona in Hither, which is where the characters are meant to be third level. Uh, she's a challenge rating six, uh, seven creature who has quicklings, which are really dangerous for the challenge rating uh, alongside her. So that's an encounter you would probably need to change anyway if the characters choose to fight Bafflona instead of negotiating with her. Uh, even so, there is of course a more specific rundown of the difficulties and how to run various encounters with the hacks, especially in the DM's resources for the Wild Bunny Witchlight, which you can find a link to in the description below. But I want to give some quick pointers on maybe the most important things you'd want to change. In Hither, you would want to reduce Pavlona's hit point in either case, uh, and maybe remove the quicklings or have Charm help the characters against her, because she is really strong for that level 3 party that she's meant to go up against, at least according to the book. If you're running it for high level characters, uh, Bavlona encounter is pr probably pretty fine as it is. It won't probably need uh, a lot of adjustments because she is pretty tough uh, for that level. Even for 5th or 6th level characters, she could be a decent challenge, at least if you have the quicklings in there with her. You can add a couple of quicklings if the characters are 5th or 6th level. Um, for other encounters, you will want to beef up the constrictor snakes. That could be adding in some constrictor snakes by the slanted tower or replacing them with giant crocodiles and you can add some heron guns into the reaching the bottom encounter just at the start of hither and you can potentially if you decide to and if the characters are up there at the fifth or sixth level you can add a few more heron guns to the encounter with Acton and maybe double his hit points would be appropriate for a fifth or sixth level party so these are minor adjustments you can make the rest of the uh, realm runs pretty smoothly. There can be some other adjustments, but these are, in my opinion, the most important ones. Until they're making it easier is more about actually ensuring that the characters have a good plan going into Loomberg, because that is the most dangerous place by far in Tither. And uh, also where having a good plan and luring away the soldiers, the toy soldiers, and only facing Scabatha alone or in the kitchen where you can get some help is really important. So what you can do to make it easier if you have a low level, second or third level party, is that you can have Will of the Wild um, help out more. He can provide more aid, he's really strong in his own form. Um, so that's a huge help of course, and you can remove that rock of smothering that is in there as well, because that's a really tough creature for the challenge rating when faced alongside um, the pin cushion creature is also there with. For higher levels, I would recommend making Scabatha stronger, that's the most important thing, and also the assassin the characters can face by the Unicorn Lake. Both of these creatures have an enhanced stat block in our DMs resources for the Wild and the Witchlight, but if you don't want to deal with that, you can simply beef up the hit points for Scabatha and use an assassin stat block for the assassin by the Unicorn's Lake. In Yarn, we will have to make a lot of adjustments if we're running it for second or third level characters, namely we'd make a mudlump and okra instead of a cyclops with half or even reduced to only two or three peritons at the fake beacons and then of course remove most of the darklings that are alongside 
um, Endelin Moongrave in Mother Horn, and you can also reduce Endelin's hit points. Maybe half them would be appropriate. She isn't the most dangerous combatant, so just taking away some hit points and making her go down a little faster will make her uh, a reachable challenge for characters of third, fourth level. If you're honest, the second realm the characters go to, so they're around that fifth, fourth level, I'd advise taking a very uh, taking away a few of the paragens, just reducing it to five or six paragens would be good. Reducing the number of flame skulls to two. Uh, you should only have one flame skull if you're running it for third level characters, I should say. That's by Ribbon Risk Chasm. And you can also take away maybe a third or half of the Darklings inside Mother Horn, so making that a more appropriate challenge as well. If Yon remains the last uh, place that the characters go to, I would advise actually beefing up Indolin Moongrave a bit because he's quite easy for a six level party, so that would include perhaps giving her the enhanced stat block we also have in the DM's resources or just beefing up her hit points or making sure that the characters face her alongside her min minions or one of her already defeated sisters. So yeah, that's how I have gone about opening up the structure of the White Bunny Witchlight in my own game and how I would advise you to do it in your game if you would like to. Remember, it's not an all or nothing deal. You can't just say the characters can choose between hither and thither as they begin and then they go the linear way from there, or it could be that they can choose from all three realms to begin with, but then they go from A to B to C afterwards. You can open it or close it as much as you want. The most important thing here is to give the players that sense of agency. They are in charge of their own destiny. They decide where to go. So yeah, that's the video. If you liked it, you can like and subscribe. That will really help us out a lot. And if you want to, you can also check out patreon.com slash where we put out monthly encounters and adventures and where you can help us decide which videos and articles to make. Beyond that, there's not a whole lot left to say, except thank you for watching and I hope that I'll see you in the next one.